So now, what role did the internet play in stoking the darkness of Mark Bridger? Just before we came on air, I spoke to Jim Gamble. He's the former head of the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Centre, SEOPS. So, what role did abusive images of children on the internet play in this case? Well, I think the, the, the access to child abuse images that we've seen in the Stuart Hazel case and now with Mark Bridger um, is a pattern that we need to reflect on. It's something that I saw on a frequent basis where people viewed these images because they have had a deviant sexual desire that prompted them to seek them out online. The internet didn't create that desire. They had it before they went looking for them. But the internet made it easier for them to see them. And they begin a journey then of looking at these images, you know, to satisfy themselves, then moving images. And, and, and some, I believe many, come to a point uh, in that journey when they need to step outside the virtual into the real world where they represent a real risk to our children. Are you saying then that, that many of these sorts of people might never have committed offences if those images had not been available on the internet? In other words, there was an age when far fewer of these men would have done this thing. Um, I, I don't think I'm qualified to say that, but I am concerned that they're able to begin this journey, begin that sexual um, journey that they're on where they are focused on this deviant sexual interest in children. And, and they build on it and build on it. And as with most sexually motivated crime, fantasy is one thing, but they come to a point where many people will step off. And, and I'm deeply concerned that we now need to step back and reflect, because had Mark Bridger been arrested in possession of images only, he probably wouldn't have gone to prison. So we need to think about how we risk assess those men or, or the few cases of women that are found who are viewing images. How we look at the context of their lives, the controlling behaviour with their partners, the multiple relationships. They're all about dominance, power and control. And they're habitual liars. The judge got that absolutely right. This man was a liar and a paedophile. But isn't there a case for driving at this from the top as well? I mean, looking at the carriers the people that are actually permitting this material on their platforms? Well, you need, there needs to be a 360-degree approach to this. But the, the problem is people become confused. There is an issue with access to adult pornography online and whether people opt in and have to prove they're adults or not. Where child abuse images are identified online, all of the major providers block them. They do that through the Internet Watch Foundation list. The issue that I'm deeply concerned about is if you read CEOP's annual review, and the people in CEOP are fantastic, but they're dealing with 1,600 reports a month. In my day, that was 600. Now, they're not got any extra money. They've got 6.4 million. Their money's gone down, not up. So the Internet Watch Foundation say we're dealing with a tsunami of these, these images, that the images, there are more available than ever to the motivated person that goes out looking for them. The children are younger who are being abused in them, and the abuse is more severe. So. We've got to invest in behavioural analysis to understand why people do what they do and how we can interdict it. We it, have it, to support CEOP better than we do. In an awful sort of a way, Mark Bridger is probably the most uh, comprehensive guide to the worst of mankind's behaviour in this, in this region. Well, he's a good guide and, and you know, he's, he's a prompt that it's time to reflect. The, the, the family of April Jones have been so dignified. The community have been so close. I believe the police have done the best job they can in the circumstances. But we need to learn lessons. We need to step back. Government needs to think and they need to invest to save £6.4 million in the entity that was created to combat this very thing is just a drop in the ocean. You know, at the end of the day, Amazon only paid three million pounds in corporation tax. And we have this debate about tax. Let's get our priorities right. Let's fund the Child Exploitation Online Protection Centre so that the staff are properly cared for while they do a difficult job for them. And let's make sure we're funding research so that we understand more about what's happening in the mind of sex offenders so they can be interdicted earlier. And of course, we need to work with internet service providers. But there needs to be a better and more effective strategy. Because standing still is not an option. Because where technology is involved, you simply fall behind. And after the recent cases, can anyone say that we can afford to stand still and consolidate? We need to increase investment. We need to radically move to a place where we understand better why these people do what they do. Jim Gamble. And that's partnership. Thank you very much indeed Thank for you. joining us. Thank you.